Good evening from Los Angeles, California. I'm Dr. Ryan Ava. In the past few hours, we have received a bit of a breaking news. The Department of Justice is investigating Donald Trump. Washington Post is reporting that DOJ is investigating the ex-president actions as part of its criminal probe, January 6th. Sources telling the Post that federal prosecutors were questioning witnesses before a grand jury have asked hours of detailed questions about meetings Trump led in December 2020, January 2021, his pressure campaign on Pence to overturn the election, and what instructions Trump gave the lawyers and advisors, and advisors about uh, fake electors and sending electors back to the estates. Some of the questions focus directly on the extent of Trump's involvement in the fake electoral uh, efforts led by his outside lawyers, including John Eastman and Rudy Giuliani. Now, of course, at some level, I think we all thought something like this was happening, but there has not been any concrete reporting uh, up until now. This major news comes tonight as Attorney General Merrick Garland is speaking out for the first time since the January 6th committee uh, wrapped its final public hearing of the summer uh, until the committee returns in, this, in September. And it comes of course at a key moment for Garland. I mean all eyes are on Attorney General Garland and the Department of Justice, both, both of which are under pressure to take action in light of the damning set of facts that have been laid out so rigorously by the committee over the course of eight hearings. The committee showed how Donald Trump and his allies willfully, intentionally conspired to overturn a lawful election, culminating uh, in an attempted uh, coup on January 6th. Then came the news that the day after the eighth and final hearing, Mark Short, he is the chief of staff to Mike Pence, testified before a federal grand jury investigating insurrection in D.C. And yesterday, we learned that Short wasn't the only Pence official that testified. Pence's uh, chief counsel, Greg Jacob, also uh, appeared before the grand jury, making those two officials the most prominent witnesses that we know of that have testified as part of the Department of Justice uh, uh, criminal investigation before a criminal grand jury. They were both present for key meetings uh, where Donald Trump and his allies tried to pressure Pence into halting the certification of electoral votes on January 6th. Today, we got this stunning report from New York Times publishing previously undisclosed emails that shed uh, new lights on the ex-president uh, fake electoral scheme. These are really something else. The dozens of emails among people connected to the Trump campaign, outside advisors and close associates of Mr. Trump, show a particular focus on assembling lists of people who would claim, with no basis, to be electoral college electors on his behalf in battleground states that he had lost. The author of several of those emails, an Arizona lawyer who helped organize the pro-Trump electors in that state, repeatedly called those very electors fake that's the word he used. He fully understood what they were up to, writing in an email a Trump campaign advisor, Boris Epstein, quote, we would just be sending in fake electoral votes to Pence so that someone in Congress can make an objection when they start counting votes and start arguing that the fake votes should be counted. In a follow up to that message, he wrote, alternative votes is probably a better term than fake votes, adding a smiley face emoji. Whew. Nice save there, buddy. Good now, one. Um, we know that this scheme is part of the Department of Justice investigation. Washington Post reports of grand jury uh, issued subpoenas already to two Arizona uh, lawmakers last month, seeking communications relating to any effort uh, plan or attempt to uh, serve as, a, uh, as, an electoral, uh, as an elector for Donald Trump or Mike Pence. And those subpoenas are just part of what the Post describes as a significant escalation and, exp and expansion of the Justice Department's criminal, criminal probe. Now, around the same time, federal agents um, um, fanned out in multiple uh, states to serve subpoenas 
uh, execute search warrants in interview uh, and interview potential witnesses as part of the investigation into the electorals scheme. And amid this massive uh, swirl of activity uh, and speculation and pressure uh, and anticipation, there is attorney Mark uh, and there is attorney general Mary Garland. A man who has been completely avoiding interviews but decided to sit down with Lester Holt. Now, of course, he can divulge specific details about the investigation. It is still fascinating uh, and he, offering a perspective at this key moment. Uh, and take a listen for yourself. We'll talk about uh, January 6th. We've just watched weeks of some pretty horrific testimony about what led up to January 6th and what happened that day. Just as an American, can you tell me what your impression was of, of what we heard? You're talking about the hearings? The hearings. Look, I think it is very important. It's an important part of democracy that every American recognizes the truth of what happened on January 6th and in the time surrounding it. I think that this is an par important part that we not uh, downgrade or... Uh, suppress how important that day was, and I think that the hearings did an extremely good job of reminding us, and for people who didn't know in the first place, telling us how important that day was and uh, well, what a risk it, uh, it, it meant for our democracy. Is the committee offering you anything in terms of an informal roadmap? Are you learning things you didn't know? Look, um, the Justice Department has been doing the most wide-ranging investigation in its history, and the committee is doing an enormously wide-ranging investigation as well. It is inevitable that uh, there will be things that they find before we have found them, and there will, is inevitable that there will be things we find that they haven't found. That's what happens when you have two wide-ranging investigations going on at the same time. But the Justice Department has from the beginning been moving urgently to learn everything we can about this period and to bring to justice everybody who's criminally responsible for interfering with the peaceful transfer of power from one administration to another, which is the fundamental element of our democracy. You, you, you said you're moving quickly at this. There's been a lot of criticism, a lot of pressure that the DOJ is kind of behind the power curve here, behind the committee, not moving quickly enough on what appears to be solid evidence in some cases. As I said, we, we have been moving urgently since the very beginning. We have a huge number of prosecutors and agents working on these cases. It is inevitable in this kind of investigation that there will be speculation about what we are doing, who we are investigating, what our theories are. The reason there is this speculation and uncertainty is that a fundamental tenet of what we do as prosecutors and investigators is to do it outside of the public eye. We do that for two important reasons. One is to protect the civil liberties of peoples and event, people and events that we're investigating. And the second is to ensure the success and the integrity of our investigation. Would a criminal referral from the committee carry a lot of weight? Would it be welcomed by the Department of Justice? So I think that's a, a totally up to the committee. You know, we will have the evidence that the committee has presented and whatever evidence it gives us. I don't think that the nature of how they style the manner in which information is provided uh, is, is a particular significance from any legal point of view. That's not to downgrade it or to, or disparage it. It's just that that's not what uh, that's not the issue here. We have our own investigation pursuing through the principles of prosecution. You said in no uncertain terms the other day that no one is above the law. That said, um, the indictment of a former president of a perhaps candidate for president would arguably tear the country apart. Is that your concern as you make your decision down the road here? Do you have to think about things like that? Look, we pursue justice without fear or favor. We intend to hold everyone, anyone, who was criminally responsible for the events surrounding January 6th, for any attempt to interfere with the lawful transfer of power from one administration to another, accountable. That's what we do. We don't pay any attention to other uh, issues with respect to that. So if Donald Trump were to become a candidate for president again, that would not change your schedule or, or how you move forward or don't move forward? Say again that uh, we will hold accountable anyone who is criminally responsible 
for attempting to interfere with the transfer, legitimate lawful transfer of power from one administration to the next. NBC News has spoken to some people who are close to the investigation who worry that the department is overwhelmed by just the sheer size of this investigation. We know several hundred people, just the Capitol alone. Do you have a a capacity? Do the courts have a capacity to, to see these cases through? Uh, I'm confident that we do. Of course, we'd like more resources, and if Congress wants to give it to us, that would be very nice. But we have people from all, prosecutors and agents from all over the country working on this matter, and I have every confidence in their ability, their professionalism, their dedication to this task. How is your department dealing with the pressure? Every day you wake up, there's a, a, a column in a newspaper talking about what you will do and when you will do it. So this I've said before, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart, the only pressure that I, or my prosecutors, or the agents feel is the pressure to do the right thing. That's the only way we can pursue the rule of law. That's the only way we can keep the confidence of the American people in the rule of law, which is an essential part of our democratic system. To see more videos like this and to support my work, click the subscribe button here on the screen. You may also follow me on Medium, where I write about the most important topics daily, or check out my podcast, Dr. Ryan Alva Show, on Apple or Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast.